Hello, in this video, I will be talking about the risk of endometrial or uterine cancer related to tamoxifen. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out not just new, but also updated content. So there's always something new to watch. I'd also love to invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized yerba report. So why would tamoxifen increase the risk of uterine cancer, endometrial cancer? This is an interesting thing about the body and about tamoxifen. So in the body, we have two different types of estrogen receptors, estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. And depending on which receptor is present in which tissue, tamoxifen will either act like an ends an estrogen blocker, or it can act like estrogen. And we've covered this in other videos, but specific to this one, unlike breast cancer cells where tamoxifen looks like it opposes estrogen, in the uterus, it acts like a estrogen promoter. So tamoxifen binds to the lining of the uterus called the endometrium, and it acts like estrogen and can lead to thickening of the uterine lining. So the uterine lining during our periods is very thin, after menopause is thin, but tamoxifen makes it thicker. It makes the uterine liner thicker, uterine lining thicker, because it looks like estrogen. And so that is one of the changes we see. We can also see polyps, which are benign. And last, we can see cancer of the uterus because of the estrogen-like effects of tamoxifen on the uterine lining. This is a serious concern, particularly if this happens to you, the cancer of the uterus. I want to back up and talk briefly about thickening of the endometrium. In 2001, there were a couple studies that came out within a month of each other. And these studies did biopsies in people on tamoxifen who had thickening of the lining of the uterus, and they found not a single cancer. So even if the endometrium gets thickened, it doesn't mean this is cancerous, and nothing needs to be done to prove that this isn't cancer. We'll get to what concerns us more in just a moment. Polyps also are generally something we don't screen for. If you have bleeding, the polyp will be removed and the bleeding should stop. This is a serious concern, yet it's very rare. So what we know from years of evidence, years of evidence that was compiled recently in 2023 in a large meta-analysis where multiple studies are put together, and then we can actually look at the risk, the risk of cancer of the uterus in people on tamoxifen was increased 2.4 fold. That means that the risk in people who don't have are not on tamoxifen, if we set that at one, a risk of one, sort of an average risk, and then we look at people on tamoxifen, particularly in people on tamoxifen for a long time, the risk is increased 2.4 fold. And this sounds tremendous, and you'll, you'll hear this. You'll hear a you know, large increase in the risk. The thing to take note of is, though, that the absolute risk is quite small. So let me explain what I mean by that. If we say of 1,000 women not on tamoxifen, one will develop endometrial cancer in the course of five years, what we see in people on tamoxifen is that between two and three people out of a thousand will develop cancer of the uterus. So you can hear that risk goes from one in a thousand to two to three in a thousand. You can hear that that more than doubles the risk, but the risk is still quite low. And so if the benefits of tamoxifen and longer periods of tamoxifen are beneficial in terms of reducing the risk of breast cancer recurrence and death, that the benefits outweigh the risk. That's not the case for everybody. In people with non-invasive breast cancer, we don't see a survival benefit from tamoxifen. 
So people with DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, who let's say had the breast removed, their benefit from tamoxifen is in reducing the risk in the unaffected breast a very small percent. And those folks staying on tamoxifen if they're not feeling good or staying on tamoxifen for more than five years, it's not going to give them that benefit and that risk of cancer of the uterus is unacceptably high compared to the benefit. If we take somebody with stage two or stage three disease, the benefits of tamoxifen aromatase inhibitors or alternating the two drugs is so tremendous in terms of saving lives and the risk of endometrial cancer is relatively small. I've mentioned a couple times in this video that how long somebody is on tamoxifen is associated with the risk of endometrial cancer. So there are two things to hear about this. One is that yes, the risk is high, but it's higher the longer you're on it. So we hear a 2.4 fold risk in people on tamoxifen compared to not, and that does sound high even though the absolute risk is low but it's greater the longer you're on it. So unless somebody has a compelling reason to be on long versus short tamoxifen, the benefits of staying on tamoxifen may be outweighed by that risk. If you, have, if you don't have a uterus, you cannot get endometrial cancer. You cannot get cancer of the uterus. So if you've had your uterus removed, this is not a concern to you. If we look at the studies of the ADAM trial and the ATLAS trial, we can see that there is benefit to people with invasive cancer in staying on longer courses of endocrine therapy. But if the benefit for you of tamoxifen is small, then the risk of endometrial cancer may be outweighed, may outweigh the benefits of tamoxifen. Bottom line, the risk is increased, but it's still very small. If this has happened to you, your risk was 100%, right? We're talking about groups of people. And the thought to oncologists of having somebody get a diagnosis of cancer when we're trying to prevent recurrence and death from a cancer, it is heartbreaking. And every oncologist I know can think of one or two people who had cancer of the uterus after being on tamoxifen, and it does break our heart. But when we see people have a recurrence of their breast cancer that could have been prevented, we're even more heartbroken. Everybody's breast cancer story and care is different. I've never seen two people with the same breast cancer in the same person with the same values and preferences and other medical problems. If you want to understand more about your risk of recurrence and the benefit of tamoxifen for you, long against short or tamoxifen at all, I'd love to invite you again to go to yerba.com. Your yerba report takes everything that we know about you from your medical records after you give us permission, compiles all of that evidence, and then cross-references what we know about you with the latest medical evidence and generates a personalized report for you with the pros and cons. You also have the opportunity to write us questions and we answer those in looking at your medical record. We give you specific answers. While we can't offer advice and this is not the same as a second opinion, sometimes it's really nice to hear how people would respond sort of more objectively. And yes, of course, that still doesn't plow over your preferences and values or things that are important to you in any way, but it can really help you to see things in a really objective way. Sometimes you'll hear things that can help you in your next conversation with your medical team. And so it's a tool for you to partner better with your medical providers. This is different from accessing your portal and it's updated in real time. So the more that's known about you and your cancer, the more the report updates. So think about going to yerba.com to get your personalized report. Thanks for watching today. I know I covered a lot. Drop a comment or question below. We get back to you within one to two weeks, just as soon as we can. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.